What up folks, it's Alex here, and today I'm gonna to talk about this. This is an X-Way X1 Pro electronic skateboard. Now, this is my first ever electronic skateboard, so if you're after an in-depth review, this video probably isn't for you. What I'm gonna do is do a quick unboxing, show you what's in the box, and then we're gonna go out for a quick ride and I'll give you my initial impressions. Now, I'm gonna show you what's in the box, but it's a bit of a fake unboxing because it's already there. I've had it for a few days and I've been messing with it, riding it every day. But I'm going to show you what's in the box. So let's get this thing open. And here we go. Here's all the goodies. Good old product manual. X-Way X1 Pro leaflet, which covers some really useful statistics, which we'll talk about in a minute. The remote. This is really light and it feels way nicer than I was expecting a standard skate tool, two orange rear spare replacement polyurethane wheels. These are 85 millimeters charger. The charger is actually really cool because it's just a magnetic mag safe adapter. Really nice touch. It just means that if you knock the wire, you won't break anything. You won't pull the board over and hit anything. So that's a really nice touch. Micro USB cable that's for charging the remote there's just a port on the bottom and you just charge that via there and then they've also sent me some replacement additional rear polyurethane and front in black i don't think you get these in the box as standard thank you x-ray for popping them in the box let's just move this out of the way top speed 29 miles per hour it can apparently climb hills up to a 30 degree gradient, has a 16 mile range, reliable Bluetooth remote, seismic trucks, a 193 watt hour battery, twin 1200 watt motors, and it says it's zero maintenance. And here is the board itself. Now the first thing you'll notice about it is it's really thin. It's way thinner than I was expecting. So all the batteries are actually stored within the board itself. And then it's got hub motors. So the motors are actually in the rear wheels. As you can see, there's a bit of a concave to the deck. So when you stand on it, your feet feel really quite snug in it. The grip tape is also really quite grippy and it's slightly spongy just to help some of those vibrations. It's rock solid though, so there's no bounce, there's no flex in this deck. It is really stiff. If we flip it over, that's your on off switch. You just hold that for a few seconds to turn this thing on. Right here is your charging port. You just attach the magnetic port to there and that's it and it will charge. Now the other thing to mention, as you can see here, I'm having no real trouble at all throwing this thing around because it's really not that heavy. It's 15 pounds or about six odd kilos, which is not that much at all. So it's quite easy to pick up, it's quite easy to carry. It's a little bit long, so I can't carry it via the trucks like so. I have to fold it under my arm, but it's not too bad. It's actually relatively well balanced as well. The rear is a little bit heavier because of the motors, but it's not too bad really. That's what you get in the box. Let's actually go out now and we'll have a bit of a ride. <laughs> my local park at the wheeled sports circuit all of this is is a really super smooth figure of eight it's designed for cyclists sometimes they have little tournaments on here but it's open open to the public whenever there isn't a competition on so we're here to try out the x-way right now really quickly before we actually get into what it's like to ride i just want to tell you why i bought this thing electric skateboards are not common in the uk at all in fact they're a bit of a rarity there's only a handful of people using them and there's an even lesser amount of YouTubers talking about them. Now, I, like a lot of you, love watching YouTube or watch vlogs or watch a lot of Casey Neistat and Cody Wanna and all these guys and the vast majority of them are based in America or Canada and they nearly all use one wheels or electric skateboards and that sort of thing. So I was really interested to know if they actually worked over here in the UK. Our roads are generally much smaller potentially more congested, especially in rural town areas like where I live, and I just didn't know whether they'd work or not. 
Now electric skateboards are very expensive. The cheaper Chinese ones are four, 500 quid. Ones like boosted boards, about 1,500 pounds in the UK, which is like $2,000. The X-Ray is right in the middle. The X-Ray costs 900 pounds. That's a lot of money to spend on something which you're not even sure is gonna work. So I reached out to X-Ray and I said, listen, I've got this idea. I wanna try it. I wanna give some consumer advice to all the other British people that are thinking about this sort of thing. Can I grab one off you at a bit of a discount rate? And they said, yes, essentially. So big thanks to X-Ray for that. Now, another thing, I'm 30 years old. I'm also pushing 100 kilos. I'm quite a heavy dude. I used to play rugby, I go to the gym, I'm carrying a little bit of excess timber as well at the minute. All those reasons, I'm a little bit heavy. I'm a hell of a lot heavier than the vast majority of people that you see on YouTube using electric skateboards. I'd imagine most of them 60, 70 kilos max. And again, I wanted to know how that extra weight would affect using one of these things. Now that are the practical, sensible, youtube reasons why I wanted to pick one up so I can make some videos on it. But then the other reason is, they just look really cool. They just look really cool and really good fun, so I wanted to have a play, try one out, and see how I get on with it. So yeah, that's why I picked one up. Also, I wanna thank Burn. They didn't send me this, I haven't spoke to them, but they do helmets for people with really big heads. I have a massive head. My head is 62 centimeters, which is really quite big. If you go into a local store, generally, like a bike shop, or whatever, they usually only have a handful of helmets which actually fit me, and most of them are generic cycle style helmets, which I didn't want. Read online that this thing was good for people with big heads, and it is. In fact, it's almost too big for me, which is amazing. I don't think I've ever had an experience where a hat or a helmet has been too big. But that's a really nice change. So thanks, Burn, for accommodating people with massive heads like me. Shove this thing on and show you how ridiculous I look. <sighs> They're an absolute necessity if you're buying an electric skateboard, in my opinion. Especially if you plan to commute or get anywhere near bike lanes or bus lanes or on the roads. Because these things are sketchy. If you're sensible, they're not too bad, but things can go wrong really, really quickly. Now, I actually have elbow pads, gloves, knee pads. I bought the works because I knew I'd probably come off once or twice, and obviously a really good helmet. At the absolute minimum, you need a really good, solid helmet, in my opinion. But realistically, if you're planning to commute, buy as much protective gear as you can afford. Honestly, it's really, really worth doing. So how does it work? Well, first of all, you've got the remote, and then you've got the skateboard. So here's the remote. When you first get them, the remote and the board are paired straight out of the box so you don't need to do any pairing. Turn the board on via the button on the bottom and then you turn the remote on via this button here. The remote will vibrate and it'll say X-ray and then it'll load it. We've got the board battery, which is currently at 95%. You've got the R battery, which is the remote, which is at 64%. You've got your speed, which I'm currently doing zero miles an hour, and then you've got a one. The one is your speed mode. Mode two will max out at 15 miles an hour. Mode three is 22 miles an hour. Mode four is 25 miles an hour. And then there's also a turbo mode you can enable, which gives you that 29 miles an hour top speed. Now as I say, you're locked to mo modes one and two when you first start. You're locked to that for the first 10 miles. It's not actually a bad idea. You can override it, but if you're a complete beginner, I'd recommend staying on that. You've got a wheel up here. That is essentially your throttle. You pull it back to brake and you pull it forward and the board will move forwards. And it's as simple as that. You've got lots of granular control so you can move forwards a tiny bit, loads, or you can full throttle. It's actually quite intuitive to get used to. If you triple tap the button, it'll put the board in reverse. So the board will come backwards instead, like so. And that's literally all there is to it. The remote is really nice. The battery lasts ages and ages. It's really comfortable in the hand. It fits my hand really, really well. It's got a nice soft touch to it. The throttle has a decent spring. It's kind of springy. And you've got lots of granular control over your speed. So I, so far, have never felt out of control. Right, and then if we just get on it. Ugh. Oh, we're on a bit of a help. Got the remote and we just put it forwards. And there you go, you're off. Now, it's worth noting, I haven't ridden a skateboard for probably 10 to 15 years. I had this on Tuesday, it's now Sunday. I've only had a few days on it, but I feel so comfortable on it already. It's so intuitive. As soon as you get your balance, 
and you get used to that feeling of, of acceleration which is really weird initially when the board is moving from underneath you the board feels like it's trying to escape your feet so that's a really weird sensation but as soon as you get used to that it's really quite intuitive so I've been riding to work on it I'm fine riding down here I'm holding the camera I've got the remote in this hand trying to look where I'm going I'm pretty comfortable doing this I've got a big corner coming up now as I mentioned in the un unboxing the the board is very stiff so some of the other reviewers have mentioned about the fact that the board is so stiff I completely understand that it does mean that you get some more vibrations through your feet but it's not as bad as I was expecting it actually handles <laughs> it actually handles the pavements this is really smooth so this isn't a great example but when I'm riding to work it handles it really well there's only a few rows which really start to make your feet go numb but generally it's not too bad I think it helps that the wheels are 85 millimeters which are really big and it seems they're made of good soft material so they soak up a lot of the bumps now it is fast that's one thing I will say I'm only in I'm in mode 2 at the minute full throttle doing 12 miles an hour now if you've never done 12 miles an hour on a skateboard it feels quick so 2 is pretty good it's a pretty good cruising speed it's quite good to get to work on just chilling around here mode 2 the battery should last a reasonable while as well because you're not pushing it too hard mode 3 is a lot of fun that will get me up to about 19 miles an hour which honestly feels really really quick indeed this is a bit of a hill let's see how we do we're doing 11 miles an hour hills here we've slowed down to 10 we're only in speed 2 and to 9 miles an hour and we don't straight up that hill no issues at all it's quite good at hills actually hills kill the battery but it'll get you up them no problem whatsoever I did my commute on it as I say my commute is about two and a half miles um, it took me about 14 minutes and I averaged 12 miles an hour and the maximum I hit was 19 I was in mode 3 I got a bit brave at one point and it's actually a really nice way to get to work I'll make another video on that where I show you my actual commute but yeah it was really nice it was smooth it was pain free it all just worked really quite well the brakes work well so I'm going down a bit of a hill now don't know what the gradient is and I say I'm a bit of a lump but as soon as I put the brakes on it'll slow me down <laughs> fly get off slow me. it'll slow me right down to a dead stop so get off fly you do have to be more careful than you know on foot you need to just keep your eye on pavements and people pulling out but as long as you're paying attention you apply the brakes pretty quick this thing will slow you down it will stop you the other nice thing about the brakes if you go down a hill if you start braking it'll actually charge the battery it's got regenerative brakes so braking will have to put some power back into the battery pack now talking of battery it takes a good couple of hours to charge probably about two two and a half hours to go from dead to fully charged and they reckon it's good for 16 miles I think that 16 miles with a really light 60 70 kilo rider on the flat when I go to work on it as I say it's about two and a half miles with me 100 kilos plus my bag my helmet my pads everything else I get to work I'll probably use about 15 to 20 percent on two and a half miles I usually make it home with at least 50 to 60 percent battery that's probably in the reason of five to six miles total so realistically I think with me on it over relatively rough roads a few hills here and there start and stop for roads to cross I'll get a good 10 to 12 miles out of it so if you're a much lighter guy in a much flatter area 16 miles actually in my opinion is probably achievable good old British weather eh? really starting to rain again getting a bit wet if you'd like to know anything specifically about this board or if you've got any questions on what it's like to use as a bigger dude also if you're British and you, and you want to know more about what it's like you've got any particular questions about using one in the UK pop a comment down below I've got a whole series ah it's so wet let's go over here I'm going under a tree now I've actually got a whole series of videos I'd like to do on this thing I'm going to attempt to use it every day replace my car with it maybe do some shopping on it do the commute on it and just record and see how that goes to see if these things are a real legitimate mode of transport rather than just an expensive toy so as I say any queries anything you'd like to know pop them down below thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more vlogs more tech videos more on this bad boy the x-way 
and obviously the DaVinci Resolve tutorials, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching folks, I'll see you next time. Bye.